fellow landlords, it's Ernie, your landlord attorney, and today we're talking all about your deposit and how you should be taking care of it. Let's get started. So the deposit is a common feature in most leases. Most landlords are very familiar with the concept and tenants are also used to having to pay a deposit, but not everyone handles their deposit carefully. And because of that, we're going to talk about four things you should do every time you handle a tenant's deposit. The first is collect all of it up front. Uh, you're going to find that from time to time you've got someone who is otherwise an excellent candidate to be a tenant, but who simply cannot pay the deposit up front and you feel badly for them. The, the problem is right from the start, your tenant is indicating to you that they simply cannot afford the leasehold. And you, you can't make the excuse, well, it's just the deposit. Because time and time again, landlords who you know, waive the, uh, the, the need to pay the deposit up front end up going the entire length of the lease and never fully collecting their deposit. If a tenant is in such a bad position that they cannot pay a full month's rent and their full deposit, then they're living in that paycheck to paycheck sort of scheme that's doomed to fail. That's one car problem away from default. And, and you certainly don't want a tenant who's, who's just that close to, to defaulting on their lease uh, because then eviction comes and things get really complicated when you have to evict. So always collect your deposit 100% upfront, right at the start when your lease begins, you've got your deposit in hand. Second, make sure that your deposit encompasses all deposits. You, you are very familiar with your rent deposit, but you, sometimes there are pet deposits that also come into play. And many times landlords are, are confused about the application of a pet deposit. And so I want to talk a little bit about refundable and non-refundable deposits. So th there is a myth that you can simply designate that a, a deposit is simply non-refundable. Um, that doesn't just happen automatically. If, if you're going to say that something is non-refundable, it better be because you have a justification for that. For example, you may say, look, these are brand new carpets. And so I'm going to take a $350 non-refundable deposit because the moment you leave, no matter how large or small your pet is, there's going to be pet odor in that carpet. And I'm going to take all $350 and use it to shampoo the carpets. That's a perfectly justifiable basis. You can't just say, well, your $3,000 deposit is 100% non-refundable and I don't have to justify any of it. That's not what the law says, and even if your lease says it, it's probably not enforceable. So make sure that you designate properly whether you have a pet deposit and a rent deposit. And if you have any portion of your deposit uh, that you designate as non-refundable, make sure that you are able to justify that expenditure. Landlords, I hope you're enjoying today's video as you always do. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, join our Facebook group, and if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and subscribe here on YouTube. There's a thumbs up button there that you should click as well. Give us a like. Now, here's another issue that, I mean, landlords have the right to do this, but it's not something that I suggest. And, and that has to do with, you know, deducting small amounts from the deposit uh, along the way. If you have a tenant who's been there for six months or 12 months or 18 or, or, or whatever, and if all along the way little things have popped up and you say, well, I'm going to deduct that from the deposit or that late fee, I'm pulling it from the deposit and pull, 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 pull. At the end of the lease, you have just reduced your security. The tenant may skip out on the last month and what otherwise would have been a full month of payment is now reduced by things they were going to have to pay anyway. Your lease should be very clear as to where the liability of your tenant lies. And if in fact they've caused some kind of damage for which they are on the hook, you should charge them for that. Sometimes even you can add it as additional rent depending on the terminology in your lease. My suggestion is don't ever subtract from your deposit a fee that's owed by your tenant. All you're doing is reducing your future security. If your tenant owes you money, have them pay it. It's probably a violation of the lease for them not to pay it. 
But by you deducting it from the deposit, again, you're putting yourself uh, in a bad position once that lease comes to an end. Finally, make sure you know how to return a deposit once your lease is over. When your tenant has vacated and you've deduced all of the deductions that you can take from that security deposit, if there's a remaining balance, that balance belongs to your tenant and it should be returned. The Texas Property Code assumes that you will return any properly refundable security deposit. However, your tenant is required to give you a forwarding address so that the deposit can be returned to them and there really shouldn't be any kind of discrepancy as to whether or not rent is owed. If rent is owed and it supersedes the amount of deposit, well naturally you can apply that uh, and deduct whatever amount is owed from the deposit and sometimes there's a zero balance. However, uh, it's always a good practice within 30 days of the tenant vacating that you send some kind of notice to the tenant regarding the status of their deposit. How was the deposit applied and is there a refund that's coming to your tenant? Uh, with regard to what you have to prove, really you don't have to send a, an envelope full of receipts and invoices and stubs that show the things you pay to others uh, in order to rehabilitate the home after they vacated. But make sure that you keep all of those things in the event that you are somehow sued for wrongful withholding of a security deposit. You want to make sure that if you have to prove a case in court, you've got all the necessary documents. If somebody charges you $350, make sure you get a receipt for the work that they've done. Sometimes landlords do work on their own, and they mention this in the special provisions of the lease, or in an addenda to the lease, or somewhere where it's very clear that if I have to come and scrub the stove, if I have to come and clean out the backyard, if I have to come and haul trash, I charge X amount for my hourly rate. If you and the tenant agree to this rate, and it's reasonable, then it's perfectly chargeable and deductible from the deposit after the tenant has vacated. But you can't just make up numbers. You can't simply say, well, I feel like my hourly rate should be $500 an hour for sweeping the floor. A court's not likely going to find that reasonable, and unless you and the tenant have already agreed on that as a term, you're probably not going to be able to enforce it. Make sure that if you're going to deduct anything, it's for something that exceeds normal use and normal wear and tear and it's something that you know for sure that your tenant has done. Don't go charging for stuff that was there before the lease. That's what the condition and inventory form is that's signed at the beginning of the lease. And if you don't have one and you don't know, the court's not going to rule in your favor. Uh, you need to be able to prove that your tenant is the one on the hook for these repairs. Now these are just a few examples of the kinds of things that you should consider every time you're handling a deposit from a tenant. Nothing gets landlords in trouble quite like the wrongful withholding of a security deposit. Um, you don't want to be on the bad end of one of these lawsuits. Make sure that if you're handling a security deposit, you have done all these things, collected it all, um, designated it properly, uh, you haven't reduced it uh, during the term of the lease, and at the end you've returned everything that's rightfully owned to your tenant. If you do these things, you're going to be so much better off as a landlord and you're going to save yourself a lot of headaches. If you're interested in additional content, there's a video right here that YouTube knows that you will enjoy. Go ahead and check that out. Until next time, landlords, happy leasing.